Well, I'm sure you're right, Hal. Um, fine. Thanks very much. Oh, Frank, I'm having a bit of trouble with my transmitter and seat pod. I wonder if you'd come down and take a look at it with me. Yeah. See you later, Hal. Rotate seat plug, please, Hal. What sort of trouble have you been having, Dave? Well, I've been getting some interference on deep channel. Mm. We'll have a look at it. Open the door, Hal. Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part eight of my 2001 discovery build. Uh, a lot of great progress on the pod bay interior. Uh, I completed the sub-assemblies that I'm going to add on from the outside to give some more 3D effects to the, um, to the photo etch. Uh, last week I showed you the iconic black and white hallway, maintenance hallway, that uh, I completed for the right side of the pod. Uh, this week I'm working on the lab a uh, little lab room on the left side of the of the pod bay that you can see through the little window there and I'm also working on the oxygen tanks on the back wall the two large ones on the left side and the nine uh, little uh, red ones on the right side as well uh, I opened this video with some shots from the movie showing that little lab area with the bank of TV screens TV monitors that you can see there uh, so we're gonna start looking at that and then we'll uh, work on the um, oxygen tanks as well. All right, let me show you what I've got accomplished. All right, so the previous uh, still showed you the little um, TV screen bank that I made. I'm not really thrilled with it, and it's a little too big. The screens are a little too big, so um, I used the same basic idea of using uh, styrene and the, and the different uh, stripping, and I made a, a different one. Oh, let me turn that over. And I built the basic structure of it with the curved sides and put a little howl next to it, which I have some fiber optic I'm going to put in there. So here's just the clear screens. And so the back of it is, is just clear styrene. And then I built up around it with some of the, the black styrene, the um, UV resistant. And then in the front, I used some of the thin stripping to make the, the sections between the TV screens. And then I used five minute epoxy and just put it into the, the front to give it that kind of a warped look on it. All right, so uh, let me show you first how the howl is gonna look, and then I'll, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the TV so I, screens. I made the hole big enough for a piece of fiber optic, and I just painted, bloomed the end of it, put some red on there, so it goes straight down into it. And then uh, it's kind of hard to see it washes it out but it really looks uh, like a bright red it's actually pretty cool there we go that's kind of what it looks like but it's brighter uh, so so that's going to show his little eye try to get it right where it is there okay and then for the TV screens I'm working on some of the vellum paper that I showed earlier and I'm painting some of the clear Tamiya paints on them like blue and I have some purple and I just they don't make purple but I just mixed the uh, red and blue 
to give it kind of a purplish look. Uh, and then there's some red, which it actually comes in red. I was kind of looking for some of the other ones like purple or blue. They just have a very light blue, but they have a red, which is nice. So next thing I want to do is cut out just some little squares to put on the back of it so that they have different colors on the screens. And then I built a little light box right here to light it up from behind. And it'll do everything. It'll do the the how uh, fiber optic as well as the other one. So, all right. So let me work on that a little bit. Let me get this one down here. And here's the completed um, detailed box for the um, for the little lab section. And I put a little bit of piping in there with some thick uh, styrene and some thin back there in a the corner. I made a little ladder. Uh, you're really not going to see these very much, but you'll see a little bit of it. So I wanted to just make sure there was some detail there. And I have it all boxed in. Uh, I don't think I'll have a floor to it. It's really not necessary. You're not going to see it. So we'll see. Uh, if I needed to secure it more to the to the uh, photo at time, I do that. Um, I have the how fiber optic in there, as you can see with the red. It's glued into place. And on the back of it, I used a thin lighter and bent it a little bit, curved it so it would be flat. So when the light goes over it, it picks up the light and shows it. Plus it also lights up the little um, TV screens as well, as you can see there. All right. So this is pretty much ready to go. I need to do a little bit of black uh, masking in the back of the walls. I already started a little bit around the clear parts, but I want to do the rest of it so no light will be shining through otherwise. Um, and um, I had to trim it down a bit so it would fit in there. There's not a lot of room between the, the sphere wall and the photo etch, so, um, so this should be fine. I was... Uh, measuring it off and cutting it out so it would it would fit in there the way it's supposed to be so all right so that's ready to go in there um now um if you look in the movie stills or the movie scenes that i have in the beginning the the glass between this and the pod bay looks like it's really thick and it kind of distorts some of the images a bit uh, because basically the pod bay is a big airlock when you close those doors this door and the door to the um, maintenance compartment you would then suck all the air out so you could open up the pod bay doors and everything wouldn't get sucked out into space and then you know reverse the process and put air back in so it would have to be pretty strong so uh when i was working on the the stargazer kit uh, about two years ago i never really completed it but i was scratch building the interior uh, and i thought i would use it for this kit but they're really wildly different scales so they're really not going to work but I started to build my own um, scratch building back then that I completely did out of styrene. So here's the, the lab wall that I made out of some styrene and used other thin styrene, a similar process to what I'm doing today, and just build up the wall. And I'm gonna do some of this same detailing, like the piping on the left side underneath it that's not on the photo etch. I'm gonna build those on myself, but um, also the, the walls around the door, that kind of thing. But, um, but back then when I built this, and also the back wall that has the little air tanks, you can see those are three-dimensional as well, which I'll be doing on this kit. I, um, I wanted to come up with a window for this, although I wasn't really thinking about a, a lab behind it, but I wanted something thick that would just kind of distort what's behind there. But, uh, and I've played with a few ideas of getting something that was plastic and thick. And um, the best thing I could come up with, which I still have, which I'm going to use on this, is this really big thick piece of plastic here. And where I got this from, and sometimes you got to be inventive when you're doing uh, this hobby, is uh, a measuring cup. Which I still use as a measuring cup. But I basically just cut that off, just cut that right off the stem. It was a fairly long handle, 
And I was just in a store one day and I noticed it and thought, oh, that's a nice little thick piece of plastic. And it definitely warps what's behind it. So, um, so I've had that ever since uh, with, the, um, with the stargazer parts. And I thought, oh, you know, I can use that for this. So, um, so what that's going to do is I, I made this just big enough so that this would fit in there as well. And I will glue it in place. And it'll be the window, but it does kind of just just slightly distort the images behind it, which gives you a little bit different idea that um, that there's a thick piece of glass there. So this will be glued on to this piece before it goes into the kit, uh, and you'll just see this will come up flush against that window. I may trim it off just a little bit as well because it also covers the door and that other little um, little control panel which I want to put a fiber optic behind so alright so this is bought ready to go let me go ahead and uh, put the lights on this and stick it up against the, um, the photo etch and give you an idea of what we're gonna see alright all right, so I have the, the light box taped on the back and uh, and even though they don't look at these are um, the little monitors look uh, a lot more brighter colors. Uh, the top center is a red, the bottom center is the purple, and then the two sides are the blue, and then the little uh, red how eye on the left there. All right, and that's all being lit by that uh, that one little light box. Okay, and then when I put the um, this piece of plastic on it to distort it, And you're not going to see the edges of that either. You'll just see through that little window. It um, it distorts the image a little bit, and it's an even better effect in person. But it kind of distorts that image just a little bit, as though it were through a really thick piece of glass, which pretty much this is a thick piece of plastic. So, all right, so that looks pretty cool. And you're mostly just going to see that little control panel with the bank. Of monitors you might see a little bit of that piping but not a whole ton and then this will be glued in so this will be one whole unit that I'll have on the back of the of the photo etch uh, pod base so let me go and put that in and show you how that's all gonna look all right there we go so I have it taped behind the, um, the photo etch so you can see it through that little window there you can see the little red light for how you can see the the little uh, monitors and they're blue and red and purple and if you just angle it just right you might see a little bit of that detail back there but not much of it but you can you know there's something there so you're not just seeing an empty space uh, you don't really see the floor so I'm not really worried about that um, and you'll be seeing it like this angle through the front window front um, pod bay door which will be the one that I'll have opening so let me stick it inside there and I'll show you kind of what you're going to see through that doorway. All right, so there you go. So if you're looking through the center doorway, that's what you're going to see. Get that out of the light there. Okay. And, and keep in mind, the rest of the cockpit will be lit up, or the pod bay will be lit up. It'll all be painted white, so that won't be as glaring of a contrast, but, um, but you'll be able to see them. And you'll be able to see the little how light there and the little TV screens. So that's kind of what I'm going for right there if you're looking in that direction. Uh, and I may or may not have this one uh, able to open as well. But if I do, I'm going to have a pod there that comes out and has lights on it. So, uh, But same thing. You can see back into that, that um, little compartment there. It looks kind of cool. All right. So that's kind of what I was going for. So when you look in here, you're going to be able to see quite a bit. So you'll see that lab wall. You'll see the back uh, uh, oxygen tanks that I'm going to put in. And you'll be able to see a fair amount of that um, tunnel right there going through that back door. That'll be lit up as well. And if I have this one open, you're going to see a straight shot straight into there. So I'll pass the pod anyway. All right. Yeah. So quite a bit is visible in the pod bay as opposed to the cockpit but but that looks pretty cool so I'm real happy with that 
Uh, and as you can see, like I said, not a whole lot of room. <laughs> I mean, that's that's real close to snugging up against that uh, side of that dome there. There's not a lot of room to work with back there, so I had to trim it down quite a bit to make it fit. But um, but that turned out really nice. I like that quite a lot. All right. All right, so now I'm working on the, um, the oxygen tanks that go on this back wall, starting with this big opening right here. Then I'm gonna do the little ones over here. Uh, so I cut that area out for both, all, all of those, as you can see. So I'm gonna have some 3D effect on it, or I'm gonna have a little box behind it with the uh, 3D tanks in place. So. I've gotten a little box created, a little back for it, and I started working on the little, the tanks, the big tanks that are going to go in this little square here, and I just used a piece of sprue from the kit, this kit has lots of sprue, so I just found one that's, that's the right thickness, so when they're both inside, they're going to be, they're going to fit in there the proper way. There we go. So they fit in there fairly snugly, but there, there's a little bit of gap in between them, nothing major. All right, so those are just right. And um, and I've, I've grooved out around the top for the little line at the top, and I'll probably use a piece of stripping to put it in there. I believe it's red, um, but I just use a needle file to kind of groove that around. And then on the left side, there's a a notched out part as you can see and then it'll have a flat piece in there and some mechanics and that sort of thing and then over on this right side there's going to be another thinner tube that has a little bit of detail and some piping so all right and then I have to come up with a base for these that they sit on from there as well all right so I started working on that I cut out a little piece of thin styrene that will fit into that groove and I'll glue that in. I might want to look at putting some of the detail on there first. Uh, I want to look at the stills and kind of see how that's going to be. All right. And once again, it looks sort of like this piece from Stargazer kit. So you can see those two tanks. These are much tinier. These are a little bit bigger than the size of a grain of rice. Um, so they were a lot trickier <clears throat> to put some detail on. Uh, but that's kind of the idea that I'm going for. And then the other ones, all you have are three tanks that have a white um, section around them. Red, I'm sorry, red section around them. <clears throat> and I'll be working on that as well. All right. All right, there we go. So some very delicate work. But that's nearly the main tank part complete. Uh, the black stripe at the top, it's actually just a piece of wire. I have some of this red and black wire and I just uh, took apart a black piece and I'll end up gluing it in there and then snipping it off in the back. Um, the little side piece, if I get a focus on there. That little side piece is just a piece of flat styrene that I painted with some uh, some rust color put a couple of pieces of, of styrene on it to make it look like some detail in there and then use a couple of pieces on the bottom and I cut off of a sprue as well and sand it down a bit all right so that's the main look of it and then I'm still gonna there's still some more pieces and some yellow on there and and some other uh, design too so okay those are coming along pretty well. All right, <laughs> and here are the very delicately built uh, big oxygen tanks, or whatever they are. Tanks of some kind. Uh, a lot of really delicate detail in there. I still have to finish a little bit of painting uh, and um, 
and put on a few decals. I have some yellow ones there that are going to go down to the bottom. Uh, and then the, the black stripping around the top. Uh, quite a bit of delicate work on these. From those little side panels there that I put a little piece of t little piece of stripping in and some red paint, uh, rust paint, to uh, those little teeny those little cylinders on the sides. You can see coming out of the upper left there's a little teeny thin strip. Uh, in the um, in the actual ship they're black, so once I'm done I'll paint those black as well. All right, so. And let those dry overnight let all those parts dry on there then I want to get a little more white paint on it and then do some detailing we okay. did uh, large oxygen tanks in their little box so I've got quite a bit of detail on there uh, the tubes on the side the little black hoses up there on the top the black rings across the top I have a yellow decal there on the bottoms of them a little teeny black decal on the little ridges at the bottom. All right. Let me show you how that's going to look inside of the photo etch. All right, there we go. So there's how they're going to look there behind the photo etch. They're going to have a back on there, of course. Uh, and I might do just a little bit of edging around it with some very thin styrene uh, because the shot from the movie, there are some, some very thin pipes going around it so all right but those are looking pretty cool all right let me go ahead and get those little ones there in the middle going and then that'll pretty much wrap up my sub assemblies all right all right so I'm working on the little uh, tanks that go in the three little areas right here these three right here and each of these has three smaller short tanks that are connected and uh, they're not exactly like uh, right together they have a tiny little connector between them uh, in the movie I think there's one on the top one on the bottom it looks like they're just connecting to, to take air between them but um, I just wanted to do one right between the middle and so I've been using this uh, thicker round stock right there. And it's about the right thickness, so when I have three of them closely together, they'll fit right in that little area there. And um, in order to put this tiny little tube through, I'm drilling a hole through it. And uh, to do that, I'm using a pin vise. A very small drill bit. Uh, it's pretty delicate, but the, the pin vise has some nice control to it. You can just hold it and you put it on just as much pressure as you need and you turn it and it, it goes through very well. These bits are designed to dig through the plastic and pull out little threads of it. A little bit different design than a drill bit you'd use for a Dremel. I found out. I tried to use a drill bit from a Dremel and it just really wouldn't do it. It wouldn't, wouldn't pull out the plastic. So. Uh, this is really nice. I'm surprised I haven't gotten one before, but uh, now I'll use it a lot more now that I have one. So what I've done is I've um, drilled through each of them, and these aren't the right length. I'm just they're easy to work with right now that I have the um, have them longer length, uh, and so that actually goes right through them, and I have it glued in right now, and it's drying. So I'll let those sit overnight, and then I'll just use an exacto knife to trim them down to the right thickness that I want them to be. And I'm still debating about how to do the rounded top. At first I was just sanding them and I tried to come up with um, a tiny little piece that was sanded smooth but this is literally the size of a of a grain of rice so it's really really hard to to get that just right and do that nine times so I kind of gave up on that and what I'm gonna probably end up doing is once these are done and glued together and I trim them and sand them so they're all even. Uh, I'm going to just take some 5-minute epoxy, which is pretty thick, and dab a drop on top, which should give it kind of a rounded bead, and see if that will work. 
and in the end I can just paint it white uh, and then I can paint the section in the middle with the red first so I end up with just the red where I want it to be all right so uh, I have three of these done I'm just letting those dry right now Go. Let those dry overnight and then we'll get those trimmed off and start getting those designed as well and that'll pretty much uh, wrap up the sub assemblies I already have a box started for that um, for that part this is kind of the frame of it and in the middle I have a piece of styrene so that they'll fit right inside of that and then there'll be a top on it all right so that's coming along well and uh, and I already showed you the other big tanks so I can get that finished up all right let me let those dry and we'll finish working on these all right all right so I've been doing a, a couple of tests to kind of get um, the rounded part at the top and a bit of a lip on it so uh, here's a test piece I took a piece of the tubing and I just used a lighter to just move it close to it enough just to start it to melt just slightly and it just forms a little bit of a of an edge around the top which uh, the tanks seem to have in the film and it gives me a nice flat surface to work on so then I took some five minute epoxy and um, just dabbed it on top and it naturally rounds itself down to a bead and it's pretty thick so it stays in that place get a good focus on that and then it just it dries like that and this is dry so now I can just paint that white uh, but what I'll do is I'll I'll first get the three pieces get them uh, get that lip put onto it with the lighter uh, put the bead on top of each one or actually I'm sorry before I do that paint them red and then put the bead on top which I'm gonna paint white all right so let me go ahead and work on that and we'll get these all done All right, and here's the completed set of the smaller tanks glued onto the little box that I, I'm going to stick behind it. Still going to trim off this little piece on the end here, but uh, let me stick that behind the kit and I'll show you how that's going to look behind the photo etch. All right, there we go. And they might not be perfectly straight right now in there, but uh, those are going to look pretty cool really hard to get a uniform detail on those but I think it'll be fine once the rest of it is painted white and they'll be kind of blocked anyway by the spacesuits over to the right side there but all right so let me just put that other tank set in there and I'll show you how these will look together so, all right so there are the replacement large tanks on the left little red tanks on the right and then are permanently glued in place I'll wait to do that until I get the um, rest of the detail on the pod bay and get it painted I might be ready to glue those on at the end all right so three um, major sub assemblies completed uh, I got the um, the right maintenance corridor completed I got the left lab completed with the TV monitors and I got the back wall of the um, the tanks completed so those are ready to go. I can now start working on the rest of the detail on the inside walls of the pod bay and the roof with the little vents and the piping and that kind of thing. So, all right, so this is coming along really well. Uh, let me show you one other thing that I got completed, which is pretty cool. And then we'll wrap up this video for this week. All right, all right, and here's the final piece that I'm gonna wrap up this video with. I painted one of the uh, 144 scale Shapeways, where to get a focus on that, Shapeways 3D printed figures, there we go, and it's the one of Dave Bowman walking through the corridor, so I got him painted and glued onto there. I took the bottom section back out because it was hard to kind of get him positioned in there, so I took it out so I can glue him in place, and there he is. So let me get this back in there and uh, and we'll have him walking down that corridor from the iconic scene of the movie.
All right, there we go. And there's that iconic image of him walking down the corridor. And when this is inside the ship, obviously, the pod bay, it's going to light up. You can see the different panels lighting up there. So, all right. Very, very pleased with the Shapeways. Excellent, excellent. Highly detailed, excellent pose. So it made it much easier to try to get that the look. Difficult to paint. It's very tiny for sure. But uh, I think that turned out fantastic. So, all right. So I will uh, go ahead and wrap up this video for today. I'd like to thank all my subscribers, all my new subscribers as well. And uh, keep t stay tuned. And uh, we're going to start working on the main pod bay beginning uh, with the next video. All right. Thank you, everyone.